the summer's ending. I had a wonderful summer. I hope you did too. It was super busy and I have not had a lot of time for videos and I've been trying to get back to making a video, but I was really racking my brain as to what I wanted to do. And then one of you lovely people suggested that I do vintage swimsuits. And that's a fabulous idea. I know summer's over and you might be thinking, this is the wrong time to buy a swimsuit. But actually, if you love a sale, this is the perfect time to buy a swimsuit. So that is what we are gonna talk about today, vintage swimwear. Swimwear has come a long way in a relatively short amount of time. The first bathing suit, and I'm going to use the air quotes because it's nothing like what we think of a bathing suit, basically appeared in the 1860s. It was a short dress with bloomers and black stockings and shoes, and it was all made out of black wool flannel. <laughs> That sounds like the most miserable thing to make a swimsuit out of in existence. But they were going for modesty, first of all. And if you think that a lot of the fashions that we think of for the Victorian era originated in England, I sort of wonder if it wasn't a little bit more chilly on those beaches than it was in other places. But the Victorians were setting the style for the rest of the world. So we all were wearing black wool dresses into the water in the Victorian age. Now, while I love the style, I do think that it needs some tweaks for comfort and practicality's sake. By the 1920s, with the flapper age and the roaring 20s and everybody kind of, you know, having more time to go out and have fun, swimsuits changed pretty dramatically. Women were showing a lot more skin. The fabric technology hadn't really caught up to the design. It was still not what I would call a performance fabric. It wasn't stretchy, it wasn't spandex, it didn't do anything to hide uh, the things that you probably don't want to show on a beach. And I actually found a picture of some women in the 20s or 30s, and you can basically see through these swimsuits when they're not wet. So I can only imagine what it was like if you got them wet. It was probably a little scandalous. The 1930s and 40s brought wartime to the world. And with it, there were some interesting innovations in fabric. And this is really when the swimsuit begins to seem more like what we know today. The first bikini was invented in 1946 by a Frenchman named Louis Renard. I hope I said that correctly. And he called it the bikini after Bikini Atoll, which was the island that the atomic bomb testing was going on. So if you watched my vintage bullet bra video, you probably will remember me saying that people were trying to weaponize everything during wartime. And the bikini doesn't seem to be any exception to that. I'm pointing at my laptop, by the way. The bikini also was named for wartime efforts. Now, even though it was invented in the 1940s, the two-piece swimsuit really didn't become, and when I say two-piece, I mean with midriff showing, really didn't become popular until the 1950s. Bridget Bardot wore a bikini in a film called The Girl in the Bikini. In 1964, Annette Funicello wore a two-piece swimsuit, which was decidedly more wholesome, in a movie called Bikini Beach. Movies like this and actresses like this really put the idea of a two-piece swimsuit into women's minds. And so the bikini began gaining more and more popu popularity, especially as actresses like Annette Funicello made it seem more wholesome and like anybody could wear one. So for this video, we are going to look at three brands that do vintage reproduction swimsuits. There's lots of other brands out there, but I'm just going to cover three today. Before we talk about those brands, I do want to talk briefly about the kinds that you find on Amazon and some mass marketplaces. I don't want to call them knockoffs, but they are inexpensive. They're inexpensive and they have a vintage style. However, the reason that I'm not going to talk about them in this post is because even though they have the vintage style, I have tried several and I will show you pictures of the ones that I've tried. They were cheap Amazon brands and they claim to be vintage. But if you'll notice, the problem with both of these suits was that even though they're supposed to be high waist, they stopped right below my navel. A true high waist swimsuit is going to stop well above the navel. And when it stops below the navel, but it's quite tight because it's supposed to be high on a waist, what you have is this squeezing that creates the skin overhang and it does not make you feel good about yourself on the beach or even just in your home looking in the mirror. It happens and I don't want you to blame your body if you happen to get a swimsuit like that. I think that the design is poor. 
I think that it is a vintage feel without having a full understanding or putting in the full effort to reproducing a vintage design. So definitely these brands are cute, but I have not had good success on the fit. They don't fit the way that vintage brands and vintage styles fit when we look back at pictures. So I'm not gonna talk about them today. I don't, I don't like them. I haven't had good success with them. The last time that I bought a swimsuit I loved was in 2012. And I remember because that was the year that everybody was freaking out that the world was gonna end in December. So I thought, why not take a tropical vacation before it ends? And I, so that was the first time that I, and it was already after summer. So I bought it on sale from Victoria's Secret and it was this really cute, I still have it, I still wear it every year, even though it's been over 10 years, but it's in great shape. It was really cute. It reminded me of a Bond girl type swimsuit. It had that 1960s feel and it's still my favorite suit. It looks the best on me. I had an amazing time on my vacation and I made it back in time that if the world did end, I could spend Christmas with my family. So it all worked out. That is the only swimsuit I've ever worn in my life that I could say I feel like made me feel good about myself on the beach. It just worked with my shape. I have a pear shape that's very hard to dress without making your bottom half just continually look bigger and bigger and bigger. So this suit did exactly what I needed it to do. It had a little bit of skirt, it covered my thighs and it just balanced it and you know, showed off my cleavage in just the right way. It made my shape look amazing. And I have not found a swimsuit that I loved that much and that made me feel good about my body in almost 10 years. So I'm hoping that today we are gonna find some stuff that's going to do the trick because that swimsuit is 10 years old. I still wear it, I still love it, but eventually it's gonna have to go. So let's, let's see what we can find today as far as vintage swimmer goes. So we're gonna do a little shopping together today. We're gonna to try, first and foremost, one of my favorite vintage reproduction brands, which is Collective. Collective is a British-based brand, although they do have shops in the U.S. now. So far, I have loved everything I've bought from Collective. I love the style. They do a lot of novelty prints, which clearly I love. And we're going to start with them. So right now, I'll be looking at my laptop off and on. Right now, because we are past the peak of summer, I went to PlayfulPromises.com and looked at their swimwear section where they have done a collaboration with collective and all of their pieces right now are $15 for a one piece and $7 per piece for a two piece, excuse me, $7.50 for a two piece. So $15 for a swimsuit is amazing. Normally a swimsuit from collective could range from about 60 to a hundred dollars. And the two piece sets are in there around 35 to $50 per piece. So you are generally paying in the neighborhood of, like I said, 65 to hundred dollars, even if you buy a one piece or the two separate pieces. So for $15, I'm gonna go ahead and buy several of these suits and we're gonna try them out. I really wanted when buying suits for this video to find suits that looked like photos of swimsuits that I could find on the internet. So I really attempted to find something that was almost an exact copy of a real vintage piece. So, um, one thing I want to note is that I am not much of a two-piece girl. I am out in the world, but not much for this video. So we're going to do a lot of one pieces. I will try one two-piece just for you guys though. So I think from Playful Promises, I'm going to get, I love this green high shine skirted swimsuit. It looks almost exactly like a vintage illustration that I found from the 1920s or 30s. So I'm going to get that one. The sizing is a little bit interesting to me. It says that it's an extra small, which is what I wear, or a US size four, which if you're familiar with US sizes, that's about a size or two bigger than an extra small. So it's a little confusing, but I'm gonna go ahead and order extra small. That's usually what I wear. Okay, I love this collective toucan frilled balcony swimsuit. It looks a lot like um, a couple of the vintage illustrations. I love the little ruffles on the bodice and at the at the, around the legs. I'm gonna order the lobster skirted brief and the lobster ruched triangle bikini top. Again, this looks like a vintage photo from Florida. I think it was taken in the 19, 
it's not dated. I'm going to say the 40s to 60s range. So it's a later vintage style. I would guess maybe, let's say 50s, let's say 1950s. So I'm going to order those. My total order comes to $46. I actually got a discount on this, so I got an extra $9 off. And then with shipping it added 10 bucks, so $46 total. Hopefully this will be here with just in, you know, within just like a couple weeks. The next brand that we're going to try is Esther Williams. Now, if you know anything about Esther Williams, she was a pretty amazing gal. Esther Williams basically invented the genre of the aquatic musical. She was a championship winning swimmer. She was, she won medals and she was discovered and then turned into a movie star. And so most of her movies feature her swimming. She could just kind of do it all. But because her movies focused around her swimming abilities, this line of bathing suits tries to mimic the styles that she wore when making her films. One of the reasons I'm choosing the Esther Williams brand is because it's often carried at marketplaces. So I found Esther Williams at Walmart. I found it at Mod Cloth at Unique Vintage. I'm going to be buying mine off of Poshmark from a marketplace that carries lots of new swimsuits. The Esther Williams style tends to be one pieces with a halter and some ruching in the bodice. So it looks very flattering and it kind of looks like it comes low on the legs, which for me, I'm a pear shape. You need a little leg coverage because when you're showing it off, it just kind of looks like you're walking around on turkey drumsticks. It's not flattering. So hopefully this will be a good look for me. Esther Williams swimsuits tend to be around 80 to hundred dollars. They're on the higher end of what we're going to be buying today. The last brand that we're going to try is Betty Page. You know, I love Betty Page. Obviously I, her style is amazing. Even though she was known more for what she didn't wear than what she did, there is a brand out there that does uh, lingerie and swimwear in the Betty Page vintage style. I'm going to get it from Poshmark from the same marketplace because like Esther Williams, Betty Page is a brand that you can find on marketplaces. I've seen it at Amazon and I think I may have seen it at uh, Playful Promises for sure and maybe even um, Unique Vintage carries some of it as well. Okay, I, I love this Betty Page in the black and white gingham with the skirt. It actually looks like a picture that I saw of a style that Betty Page was wearing, so I'm gonna go ahead and get that. The sizing charts for the Esther Williams and the Betty Page are a little bit kind of like the one from Collective. It says size four, but it's an extra small. An extra small is a zero or a two, typically. So the size four is throwing me off a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and order the Betty Page in a size six and the Esther Williams in a size four and see what we get. Hopefully they'll fit. Like Esther Williams, Betty Page swimsuits also tend to be in the 80 to hundred dollar range. So I'm really hoping that the quality is going to be good on these suits. So because I'm buying the Betty Page and the Esther Williams from the same marketplace on Poshmark, they're giving me a little bit of a discount. It's $10 off of each suit which is really nice. I'm going to order all of these and they should be in in about two weeks and we'll pick up from there. Unfortunately, this video is going to be a little more choppy than I wanted it to be. I was hoping to do a maximum of two segments, the shopping part and then the trying on part. But unfortunately, half of my swimsuits arrived and the other half got lost in postal purgatory somewhere around New Jersey. But two of the swimsuits did arrive. So the Betty Page showed up and the Esther Williams both arrived. So we're gonna try those on first and talk about how they fit. And then I'll just have to come back later and do the other three swimsuits when they arrive, which hopefully will be next week. So let's talk about the Esther Williams suit. So it has the halter neck, it has the ruching on the stomach and just this little bit of like a faux skirt. And that's very nice. It was extremely difficult to get on. <laughs> so I chose the size four. I normally wear a size zero, which is an extra small or an extra, extra small, depending on the brand. So I chose the smallest size in this because it was a size four thinking that that would be my size. It's two sizes bigger than I usually wear. It was very hard to get on. <laughs> if you're a pear-shaped girl like me, then you already know the struggle 
and the dread of putting things on over your bottom first. The pear-shaped girls just know you go over your head. If at all possible, you go over your head because if you try to go over your bottom, you are going to be popping seams right and left. And that definitely happened. <laughs> so I put my legs into it and I pulled. And as soon as I get to the bottom, I hear seams popping because that is that is the plight of the pear-shaped girl. The inside of the Esther Williams does have these. There's no wire and this band for support. And the back is very tight, but there's not exactly a support band back here. So it's not exactly a built-in bra. It's really just in the front and the cups are soft and no wires. So that's the level of support that you're dealing with on this one. And it does have a mesh down the front. And I believe this is for tummy control. I'm not positive on that, but I believe that that's what it's for is to make you have a flatter tummy. Um, having it on, I, I like the way it looks. It's nice. It is really tight on my bottom. My butt cheeks are not properly covered by the swimsuit. So I would maybe have to go a size up. That's three sizes bigger than I normally wear. So that is really difficult on the sizing. It could just be me, but I'm gonna try on the Betty Page next. And that I did buy in a size six. So we'll see if maybe that's a better fit. <laughs> Betty Page suit has a removable strap, so you can wear it strapless or with the strap. And this is really nice. It does have underwires in the cups, so you do get support there. And this is a foam layer, so you're not going to have any issue with it being... I don't know how to word this correctly. Should the headlights be on, no one will know. Is that subtle enough? We're just going to go with that. There's no support beyond that. So there's not this, the band that some of them have. It's just the cups. So this is an incredibly cute vintage style. It's got a little bit of modesty. It's got a little bit of sexy. It's got a very feminine look to it. I love the way that you have some support here and you've got the belt, which separates the waist from the bottom and the cute little skirt. There's a lot to love about this suit. I did go a size up, so it's definitely loose in the top and fits great in the bottom. That's being a pear shape. It's going to be too big or too small, no matter where you go with what style. That's just how clothes are made. However, uh, this is a problem. This is way too long for me. So I would need it like up here. And you can see that's a pretty big, that's a pretty big difference, but it's not adjustable. Let me just hold myself in while I talk about this. Um, because I feel like it's about to fall down at any moment. It is so long. When you have a suit that costs $80, to not have an adjustable strap is inexcusable. This is a very, having an adjustable strap is a very basic feature and an expensive suit should have this. I would expect something that I got for $5 from Walmart to not have an adjustable strap. An $80 swimsuit from a name brand not excusable. You should have an adjustable strap. Other than that, everything on this is really cute. And I love the print. I love the style. Everything is great. But this is such a big problem that I would not be able to wear this on the beach because you just like, I would fall out of this. <laughs> That's not what I'm going for on the beach. So this is, this is really difficult. And I would have to sew it up on my own, which I probably will. Cause I do love the suit and I'm going to keep it, but I'm, I'm disappointed in the brand for that. I'm really disappointed. It has been almost three weeks, maybe almost four weeks since I ordered these swimsuits and they were so totally lost. I don't know where they were. Eventually the post office just stopped updating me on where they were because nothing changed. And then suddenly they were at my house. So I finally have the collective swimsuits from Playful Promises. Yay. We're going to open them and try them on today so I can finish this video. So the collective swimsuits showed up from Playful Promises. I wanted to show you this. They came in this really great box. This is so cute. I love it when companies do this because it just makes it a little bit more exciting to open. All right. So the one piece ruffle swimsuit, it has underwire and it has foam cups. This is really nice. 
The straps are adjustable. Yay. And this is a nice thick fabric too. This feels very thick. <laughs> checked a lot more boxes for me. It does have the adjustable straps. It has the support in the underwire. The support is great. The fit is great. Um, didn't pop any seams putting this one on. And I like the ruffles. It's, it does have a very vintage feel, but here's where it falls short as vintage. Uh, this is incredibly high. This is almost up to my hip bone, and I don't think that we really saw that appear in vintage suits. The very high hip bone one piece, I don't think that that arrived on the scene until somewhere in the 1980s. So it does fall short of being vintage in that way. If it came down lower on my hips, I would say it's a great suit, but as it is, it comes up high in the back, comes up high on the hips, and I would want a skirt or something over this. I'm not super comfortable with it being that high on my hips. <sighs> The two piece, bottoms, they look really big. Oh, I was really nervous, I didn't see the top in there. It's like, no, they got my order wrong and it got lost, but they did totally fine. So this is the top of the two piece. It has a corset boning on the sides right here. No support, no padding. This is just a top layer and then a back mesh layer. So I ordered the bottoms in this swimsuit a size bigger, and they feel too big. <laughs> you can see, like, this is very baggy, but, and they come just above my navel. They really should come up, I feel like, right here at the natural waist. But other than that, this is a really nice suit. I like the funky print. The top is okay. I would prefer that it have some kind of padding or other lining. It's very thin. I like the design. I like the design of the bottoms too, um, because they do have more coverage. You know, this is fully covered with ruching. Tag here. <laughs> fully covered with ruching. I feel like if this were a smaller size on the bottoms, it wouldn't be as so baggy on the skirt part. And the last one is the green suit. No padding. Does have an, a lining layer and then an outer layer. And ruching at the sides and that's it. Okay, let's try this on. Let's talk about this suit. There is no support here. I could really use that, but there isn't. Also, uh, heard some seams popping when I wiggled into this, but it turned out okay. So one thing I do um, want to point out is that there is like the skirt. The skirt is not attached. So it's just kind of, <laughs> you have to keep it down yourself. I could see that being a real problem. If it's me on the beach, this thing is gonna be constantly rolling up over my hips the whole time. The halter's nice, the back is very low, and I can see, I'm gonna show you this, there's a line right here on the suit, and then this is over this. So, um, it's not as flattering on me as I would have hoped. It's fairly comfortable, but there's no support. In order to pull this up high enough, the skirt rolls up. So when I pull the skirt down, then this comes down. So there's a bit of an issue with that. Other than that, 
it's a pretty color. I like the ruching. I think ruching does wonderful things for tummy camouflaging, but there's no um, tummy control layer like there was on the other suit. It's nice. It's probably not going to be my favorite, but I do kind of like it. Um, meh. Final thoughts on all these poom suits. If I had to rank these suits, I would say Esther Williams was number one. I would say the collective one piece was two. The Betty Page was three. And then the collective green suit and the two piece would be four, simply because the fabric was quite a bit lighter. There wasn't support. There wasn't padding. It was a pretty thin suit. And I, I got them on sale, but had I paid the original price for them, I would have been really disappointed because the fabric is too thin to be that expensive. But I guess I could say at the end of all this that my swimsuit is here to stay. I haven't found one that I can say, toss that old thing and this one's my new go-to swimsuit. All of these had something I loved and some things that I didn't. Do pay attention to sizing when you're ordering these. I hope you guys have loved this video. I've had a lot of fun trying on these vintage swimsuits. If you have any ideas for things that you'd like me to try, feel free to leave me a comment. I've got more videos on the way. And until then, if you want to know what I'm doing, you can go to my blog or you can go to Instagram and find me there. I will leave links for all of these swimsuits. And if I have any promo codes, I'll leave them in the description. And I will see you soon. Bye, everybody. Oh, 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 oh,